Good evening and welcome to the report with me, Jonathan Steele. On tonight's programme, we'll be looking at human rights abuses towards Sunni communities in Iraq and the role of the Liberal Democrats Party here in Britain. But now coalition airstrikes have struck IS positions near the town of Kobani in northern Syria in an, in an attempt to stop their forces from taking control of the town. It lies on Syria's border with Turkey. As of this morning, IS was said to be in control of the eastern half of the town. Turkey, which has placed its military along the border with Syria, is having growing concerns that the conflict with IS could now be played out all along the Turkish border. Nathaniel Amos Sansom has more on this story. Western coalition jets struck ISIS targets today not far from Syria's border with Turkey. The town of Kobani along Syria's Turkish border has been the scene in recent days of a pitched battle between Kurdish fighters and ISIS forces, with an ISIS flag allegedly raised in a nearby village. Local residents across the Turkish border felt that the coalition response was too little too late. However, the strikes by American and Gulf state warplanes have so far failed to halt the advance of ISIS, who moved into the outskirts of the town over the weekend. According to the Reuters news agency, the Kobani Defense Authority told them that their forces had only light weapons against ISIS who were firing mortars at the heart of the town. More than 160,000 Syrians, mainly Kurds, have fled Kobani over the past few days, according to reports on the ground, with many of them fleeing over the Turkish border. Estimates put the number of refugees displaced into Turkey since the start of the Syrian civil war in 2011 at over 1.5 million. All of this has restoked tensions between the Turkish government and its eastern Kurdish community. Last night, Kurds clashed with the police in the southeastern province of Sizer, following a call by the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party for nationwide street demonstrations to protest the Islamic State assault on Kobani. Turkey has so far made no move to fight ISIS on the ground, beyond returning fire in response to mortar shells landing in its territory. However, Turkish tanks and armored vehicles took up positions on the border overlooking Kobani yesterday. So far, they have remained stationary and a breach of its territory by ISIS could have much larger consequences. Speaking on the situation from Poland, the new head of NATO said that the organization could get involved if Turkey's borders were not respected. The main responsibility for NATO is to protect all allied uh, countries. Turkey is a NATO ally, and our main responsibility is to protect uh, the integrity, uh, uh, the borders of Turkey, and that's the reason why we have uh, deployed Patriot missiles in Turkey to enhance, to, to strengthen the air defense of Turkey. And Turkey should know that uh, NATO will uh, be there if there is any spillover, any attacks on uh, Turkey as a consequence of the violence we see in uh, Syria. Since the start of the civil war in Syria, the border between it and Turkey has seen a steady flow of refugees escaping conflict. The risk now is that the border becomes a theater for a pitched battle that makes escape from Syria by innocent civilians all the more impossible. Nathaniel Lema Sansom, The Report. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss this is Paul Schulter, Senior Visiting Fellow from King's College London, and on the phone, Dr Ali Al-Hili, Director of the Iraqi Prospect Organization. Well, let me ask you, Paul, first of all, I mean, why are the Western airstrikes apparently so uh, feeble? Um, because there are not massed targets. It seems as though um, the uh, ISIS people are advancing flexibly in smallish numbers. And um, I think it's just not yet a situation where our air power applied in big quantities is, is, is being effective. I wouldn't say that we, we should rule it out as in becoming progressively more effective in future. More aircraft can be directed there. And it's interesting the Americans are beginning to use helicopter gunships, Apaches, even though they expose American pilots to, use, to risk. They're using them around Fallujah. It's not impossible that they could appear around Kobani, and they would uh, provide devastating and flexible firepower. We did see one Kurdish uh, person on the VT just now hinting that there might be political reasons that the West is, is, is sort of betraying the Kurds or not feeling really that they're terribly important at this stage. Well, I, I can understand that 
Kurds often feel betrayed, um, and they certainly feel that in, in relation to Turkey. I, I haven't heard credible arguments that the, the coalition, um, the, the Europeans, the Americans, the, the Iraqi government, would necessarily have the same motivations that the Turks might. There it does seem plausible to say that the Turks are holding back to, to watch the destruction of, of people they, they themselves don't like. Well, uh, Dr. Al-Hili, I mean, um, President uh, Erdogan in Turkey has said that the town of Kobani is about to fall, so maybe it is just a day or so away. I mean, how serious is that strategically if that happens? Uh, greetings to you and your guest. Um, the, well, strategically, it is, it is vital. Um, in, in the conflict uh, uh, between, you know, the coalition and, and ISIS, uh, I think the, you know, the, the, the important thing here that we have to realize um, is, is the role of Turkey in all this. You know, if, if, if you go back a few months um, and, uh, you know, you, you go back to 10th of June uh, this year uh, and you go back and find out how did actually ISIS enter Iraq, uh, you find out that uh, you know Turkey did not stop them, uh, stop ISIS entering Iraq from the the, the Syrian borders, um, and they actually you know we we had news that they actually uh, had an agreement with uh, with some uh, militants uh, that uh, you know they if they allow them to to enter then they won't take the the hostages um, the Turks uh, Turkish hostages and the and the uh, the embassy in in in, uh, in Mosul, um, uh, and, and 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 so therefore uh, um, a few weeks ago they did actually release these hostages. Whereas we know that ISIS are ruthless and and people who actually do behead and, and kill people and they don't release anyone. So so I you know there is a conspiracy of course, um, and there is a, you know a, a school of thought that says that uh, Turkey has had a hand in, in, in the entrance of or the advancement of ISIS into Iraq. And you can see now that they're not really cooperating. I mean, the Americans have asked uh, Turkey to be part of the coalition, to actually, um, you know, come out and, and, and condemn ISIS and say, look, you know, these people, they must uh, be eradicated, they must be removed. But uh, they haven't really got uh, much support from them. So. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is the case, um, and, and I guess I guess um, it's in the interest of Turkey to um, destabilize Kurdistan. I think it's in the interest of Turkey to weaken Kurdistan and the Kurds, um, and so therefore they could, they could be cooperating with the, with the, with the uh, with, with ISIS to to actually destabilize that particular region. Well, of course, one of the enemies of ISIS is not just the Kurds, but it's the Assad government in Damascus. I mean, do you think that the Turkish government, the AKP party, really thinks it would be better if IS was running Syria rather than Assad? Well, I mean, you see, the, the thing is that, it, it, you know, it, it's this whole thing, if you just pause for a second and just reflect about the whole thing about Syria, Iraq and ISIS, you know, you find that, you know, the, the fall of, and, and of course, the, the Arab Spring just before that. You find that, you know, in, in Syria, uh, the, you know, the, um, in Syria, the, there was the resistance, uh, the opposition to the Assad regime. And then a report came out said that, you know, there were, that the opposition actually made up of thousands of different groups. And now, you know, we have ISIS and we have the West. Actually, they were against Assad, whereas at the same time they were against ISIS, whereas ISIS actually are against the West and Assad. And, and you know, where is Turkey in all this? And so the, the uh, you know, the, the, the whole situation is extremely complex. Um, and to be quite honest, there isn't a very clear idea. But, but uh, then again, I do believe that, um, as I said before, Turkey have actually um, uh, are coordinating or they, they are actually having a communication, a positive so-called communication with, with ISIS. Um, regarding the issue uh, that, is, that is going on in that region. Now, it's a very difficult question to answer in terms of uh, do um, Turkey actually prefer ISIS uh, over the, you know, Assad regime? 
probably probably because Turkey have played a very significant role in funding the uh, opposition, and I guess they have funded al-Qaeda and ISIS, the extremists in Syria. Right. Uh, I'd just Syria. like to stop you there for a second to bring yes. Paul back in. Um, what, what's your view? Do you think uh, Turkey really would want ISIS to capture Damascus and to take control of the country? I doubt it. But what they do want is um, Assad reduced in power or I ideally ejected in, in favor of something else. And what I mean, Turkish complication, uh, calculations are complicated and obscure, but it looks as though Mr. Erdogan has said he really, really wants a no-fly zone, policed by the Americans uh, along that border. And uh, if he can't get that, he's reluctant to help the, the coalition out, even though the Turkish government has endorsed joining the coalition. So I think there's, there's all, the, there are various coercive bargaining games going on. The Turkish army halts and watch watches and indeed announces the expected fall of, of Kobani. Um, and this is in order, uh, partly it's like, the, I've heard it likened to the Red Army in Warsaw in 1944. You, you, you halt and watch the destruction of one enemy by, an, by another. But you hope to do also um, the trick of drawing in the alliance to do things that you want done. The Americans really are opposed to providing air cover and a buffer zone, which Turkey wants, um, because they'd have to take on the Syrian air defences and, and keep aircraft flying continuously. And it's a kind of nightmare, technically, that the US Air Force has said they want. So there's a, there's, there is a real struggle with, between Turkey and the West. What is Turkey's idea of, in, in, I suppose it did have a buffer zone and a no-fly zone. What would that mean, to prevent the Kurds uh, regrouping militarily if IS was ever defeated? Or I, it would mean partly that, but it would also, I think, for, for Turkey, mean some insulation from ISIS violence. Part, part of the game that's going on and is, is the possibility that there would be strikes by ISIS inside Turkey or incitement of Islamists in, in the slums of big cities but throughout do Turkey. That whether or not there's a buffer zone. <laughs> well, not so easily. They may have I mean, cells it's, it's, already the, in these cities. Yes, but there is a. But if they have a border, they. The, 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 Everything that the Turks have announced is they're extremely concerned about their border, their border security. It's a, it's a, it's a long, hard-to-police zone. And I think they're very interested in getting NATO involved, um, as Stoltenberg has suggested that, that NATO might be. And then it becomes very, very complicated indeed, but not necessarily in a bad way for Turkey. Um, well, on that note, it really is extremely complicated. We'll have to... Uh, end because we're now following developments uh, closely and we'll bring you an update tomorrow but we have now to turn to the rest of the day's news.